Yeah, no, I agree. Oga's is the best part of Galaxy's Edge. Oga's Cantina is one of the coolest things to experience on Black Spire Outpost on Batu. Now, I understand that for many people, a trip to Galaxy's Edge may only happen every few years or not at all. And even if it does, a trip to Oga's Cantina is never guaranteed and kind of hard to come by. So I wanted to make a video to teach you all how to have your own Oga's Cantina style party at home here on Earth. In this video, I'll teach you how to make some snacks and drinks for all ages to really evoke that feeling of being in Star Wars. Perfect if you want to host your own Sabacc night. Oh yeah, no, it's it's one of those can't miss things. I think like Oga's is a, it's a must do of the whole Galaxy's Edge experience. You're right. Oh hey, hey everybody, welcome back to the Dano channel. I am Dano, and today you guys are gonna learn how to make some drinks, some snacks, some food that are exact copies, but also some stuff that may veer off the path a little bit and kind of point you in the right direction to experience, experiment, and kind of bring the Oga's Cantina experience to your own home. We'll learn about Batu Bits, the Hapabore Sampler, and we'll learn about drinks like the Jedi Mind Trick, the Jet Juice, and some non-alcoholic options for the kiddos, the little Padawans, like the Carbon Freeze and the Cliff Dweller. So we'll definitely have a little bit of something for everybody. Now, of course, I'll be showing you the ingredients that you need, but first, I want to show off some of the glassware that I've obtained to kind of give you an idea on how to really set the feel here. Now, many of these glasses were found at thrift stores over the last year or so, but a couple of them are available on Amazon, so be sure to click the affiliate links in the pinned comment and description below. And while you're down there, you can find the exact recipes I use for all of these items, as well as the timestamps. Now, having the right look for your glassware will really make your guests and family feel like they're at a real Star Wars cantina. It's an extra touch that really shouldn't be ignored. Oh yeah, that, that's a good one. So the first thing we're going to be taking a look at is the Batu Bits. Now, it's a snack that's available on both the East and West Coast. Now, it does look like it's been changed maybe a couple times since they first introduced it to now. Because if you look up pictures of it, they're all kind of different. And I do think the Disneyland version differs quite a bit from the Disney World version. So because of that, the examples that I'm going to give aren't going to be exact. Some of the stuff you'll see will look really familiar depending on which one you've had. But some of it will be brand new. But that's kind of the point is to really just get the feel of Oga's and bring it home. Now for my bowl of Batu Bits, I use dried vegetable chips from Sprouts. Uh, I got some Happy Mixed Cracker. It's like an Asian style snack mix. Uh, some vegan cracklins, kind of like a pork rind. Yeah, but it's like a pork rind that anybody can have. So that's kind of the nice part about it. Uh, and also Jacob's Twiglet Snacks. Now, these looked cool and exotic. Personally, I was not a fan. <laughs> but I got those at Cost Plus World Market. And last, I used some Pop Sorghum, which I found at an uh, artisanal food store. And it's basically like teeny tiny little popcorn. Looks like regular popcorn, but instead of like a puff like that big, it's like tiny. Just little teeny tiny popcorns. I thought that'd be a really cool touch for a Star Wars snack. Now, I arranged all of these into a cheap black kind of stone looking bowl. I got it at Walmart for just, I think it was like two bucks, but it has kind of flex in it. And it just looks like something you'd find at Docking Bay 7 over on Batu. Oh yeah, that's actually a really good point. So feel free to experiment with different like dry snacks that look weird, maybe taste weird, something you wouldn't see every day. And then leave a comment down below and share it with me in the community so we know other stuff to try out. Now the first drink we're gonna learn about today is quickly becoming my go-to drink. It's the Jedi Mind Trick. You will share this video. Now this vodka drink is a little bit on the sweet side, but it also has some complex and floral flavors that really stand out, and it's a gorgeous blue color. People ask how I figured out what's in some of these drinks, and actually, it lists all of the ingredients on the menu at Oga, so it wasn't that hard. The hardest part is actually figuring out the best ratios. Now, it's safe to assume that Disney never puts in more than two ounces of actual alcohol in any of their drinks, so that's a great starting point if you want to replicate a taste that's as close to the park version as possible. Since this part is a bit of a guessing game, feel free to tweak these recipes until you get the taste you personally desire. Now, personally, I like my drinks a little less sweet and a little more strong, am I right? Now for this drink, I use the smaller cone-shaped cocktail glass, and I start with a shaker full of ice. 
I start off with 1.75 ounces of Kettle One Grapefruit and Rose Vodka. Now this is specific, you must use this one if you really want to get that flavor right. Uh, next up I'll add one ounce of Falernum. Next we've got one ounce of white grape juice. Uh, I found that the store brand from Walmart was okay, the great value is fine. Some people swear by Welch's. Uh, next a splash, 5 mLs of blue curacao, just a tiny little splash for color. And that's it. Now at the parks they specifically use Bowles brand blue curacao. Yeah, but our home bar already had some and I just kind of used what we had on hand. Next up you add a teaspoon of lime juice, it's 15 mLs. And last, a healthy splash of grapefruit bitters. Now the bitters, these specific grapefruit bitters, are really kind of what makes this drink have that floral, really cool taste to it. So I go heavy on the bitters myself. Next, you give it a nice shake and strain into your glass and add just a couple cubes of ice. You don't need a ton of ice, but just a couple cubes to finish it off. And there you have it. That's the Jedi mind trick. It really does play tricks on your brain when you drink it because it's so, it's so, just the floral, all of it, just the oomph. It's nice. It's a really good one. So guys, I am doing the Batu Bounty Hunt round two. Today we're gonna to be doing about, I don't know, five or six of these things via live stream. This time it's different. We need somebody who can hack the Falcon. And I need proof. Because I heard that they're trying to get away and they're gonna get out on that ship. You gotta bring me a video clip of the jets going off on the Falcon. You guys can find me. Bring me that, you'll collect the bounty. You'll be the first one to collect the bounty. They wanna be bounty hunters. They gotta work hard for this stuff. It's not as easy as just finding me. This target's not getting off of Batu. They can't leave Batu. So that Falcon's not going anywhere, right? No, nope, no way. There's no Locked target down. getting off this planet? No, nope, not Alright. Guys, we're doing this. Roll win. Roll to win a new ship. Oh, you might win a new ship today. Alright, you might win a new ship. I've got some dice here. I happen to have a chance, chance dice. cube. A chance cube. And let's say if you roll and you land on blue, today you win a new ship. Oh my gosh. We're going for blue. If he gets blue, he wins a new ship. Ah! This is Chris. Here, I'll throw you back. Oh yeah. There you go. Hi, I'm Dominic Pace, who plays Gecko the Bounty Hunter from The Mandalorian, and the Batu Bounty Hunt is on. Okay, yeah. No, next we can do my, my other preferred drink. This used to be my go-to at Oga's every single time. It's the Jet Juice. Now, one of the reasons this was my go-to is because it's actually one of the strongest drinks on the menu, but it's also physically one of the smallest drinks on the menu. Definitely something that you want to sip slowly and kind of enjoy the burn. For this drink, I try to use my smallest glass, and I start with a shaker full of ice. Now, you'll notice in my video example, I'm using a different glass. I actually just got the official the real jet juice glass in my hands and i will put an affiliate link i did have to get them from amazon uk like so if you're a you u.s will. watcher and you want to get them you can sign it yeah no you can do it i didn't know you could you just go to amazon.uk sign into your normal account and if you have prime it still works it didn't show up in two days but it did show up in about a week and a half <laughs> and i got like six of these for about 40 bucks not a bad deal so your first ingredient is 1.5 ounces of maker's mark bourbon Next up, you're going to use half an ounce of Ancho Reyes Chili Liqueur. Now, this stuff is kind of expensive. It was about 43 bucks a bottle. Now, luckily, you don't use a whole lot of it. All right. Next up, this was kind of hard to find, was the Acai Liqueur. You're going to use half an ounce. Now, the brand they use in the parks is Cedilla, C-E-D-I-L-L-A. Now, the one I found at my local Total Wine was a lot cheaper. I believe it was only about 7 or 8 bucks for the bottle, while the Cedilla one is upwards of $30 to get a hold of that. So, I went with the cheaper option, and honestly, you're only using half an ounce, so I didn't really... No, I didn't notice a difference. I thought it... I think it's pretty good the way it is. All right, next you're going to use half an ounce of white grape juice, just a little bit, and then half an ounce of lemon juice. Now you're going to want to shake all those up with that ice in that shaker and then strain into your tiny cup. And you can see in this one I was feeling a little fancy, so I added some food-grade dry ice to my jet juice just to really give it that out-of-world feel. 
Now, dry ice can be attained at most grocery stores, but should always be handled with care and used very carefully in drinks because it can cause injury if it comes into contact with bare skin. Now, it usually just sinks to the bottom, but you always got to be careful. So, chispa bakupa. All right, coming up next, we've got two non-alcoholic drinks and the Hapabor sampler to go over. But first, a word from Sad and Brad. Hey, Brad, I'm here, Jack. Hey, Brad, what do you got? Um, did you see about the Jedi Master with lasting dentures? Uh, no, bro. What happened? <laughs> well, right now, it's dental bite. That's bad. <laughs> okay, I got one for you. <laughs> Get ready. What is General Grievous's favorite band? <laughs> I don't know. What is it? Weezer. Welcome back, everyone. Now we're about to learn how to make two non-alcoholic beverages that are found at Oga's Cantina. But first, I want to let you know about a little secret. Yeah, no. I know, I know. I, know. It's, I found it on Reddit, honestly. There's people on Reddit who are talking about this. But apparently there's a secret menu item on the Oga's, at Oga's. And what it is is basically the two drinks we already learned how to make. Jedi Mind Trick, but you float a jet juice on top of it. And they call it the Sith. Now, I've made both of these at home, and I found my Jedi Mind Trick was pretty comparable to what they sell at Oga's. Same with the Jet Juice, pretty comparable to what they have at Oga's. But when you mix them together, honestly, I didn't like it. When Batu opens up for me, and I think June is when I'll be able to go to Disneyland, hopefully, uh, I'm definitely going to try and go to Oga's and see if I can ask them for the Sith. I don't know if that uses up both of my drinks because they have a two drink limit at Oga's so if that's both drinks I don't know if that uses both but either way it's a secret menu item you can try it for yourself at home and I hope you do but let me know if you do let me know in the comments or post a picture on Instagram or something yeah no they can follow you on Instagram too but tag me on Instagram heck tag Rongo too and let us know what you thought of the Sith secret menu drink all right, now the first non-alcoholic drink we're going to be making is a really fun one that uses popping boba pearls and dry ice for a really neat effect that'll have your Padawans shouting, WIZARD! All right, the Carbon Freeze is a pretty simple drink, but I can't get my home version to look exactly the same as the one served at Oga's, and that's mostly because of the strawberry syrup. So we're going to start off with a shaker full of ice. This drink primarily consists of five ounces of lemon-lime Powerade, so it's mostly Powerade. Uh, then you're going to use a little splash, like a teaspoonful of strawberry syrup. I use the quick version. It's red, but I also got a hold of the Monin Wild Strawberry and made some more. Same effect. It really did turn my Lemon Lime Powerade a reddish-pinkish color. And at the parks, it is a more yellow-orangey color. So, yeah, no, what's Oga's secret? What's her deal? How does she do that? I don't... you got to tell me. Either way, the at-home version looks a little bit different than the in-parks version. It is what it is. So either way, you really shouldn't use too much of the syrup because it's going to really, really affect the flavor, unless you really want that strawberry flavor. But it really overpowers the lemon-lime, so just go easy on the strawberry syrup and you should be fine. Next, we're going to shake that up with our ice and get that nice and cold, nice and chilly. And then over in our glass, we're going to put a chunk of dry ice and a spoonful of blueberry popping boba pearls. And those I found on Amazon, so there's an affiliate link down below for those. And as you pour your drink over the dry ice and boba pearls, you're going to notice it's got this kind of bubbling, fancy, cool effect, and it's going to start smoking, and you can watch your drink come to life. All right, next up is the Cliff Dweller drink. Now, this citrusy juice drink actually has its own signature mug at Oga's Cantina, and it's in the shape of a porg carved out of wood. Now, if you've already visited the market at Black Spire Outpost, you might have seen the Wooden Wookiee. It's a stall way down at the end, and it features all these carved artworks by Lunaka, the talented Wookiee. So for more tidbits and lore and information and stuff like that, you can actually get the uh, Galaxy's Edge Traveler's Guide to Batu on Amazon. Again, link down below. Affiliate links. This thing is cheap now. It's a really cool book with a lot of neat lore in it, so I definitely suggest picking that up. All right, now the Cliff Dweller starts off with an empty shaker. You don't want to put ice in it at first this time. You want it empty, and you want it room temperature because it will mess with the cream of coconut. Yeah, I mean, it's going to mess with the cream of coconut anyways once it hits the ice, but still, 
it's better not to do it before you shake. So you want an empty shaker. Now you're gonna take three ounces or half a can of the Dole orange and pineapple juice. I just found that this mix was already good. You can do separate orange juice and pineapple juice if that's what you have. But personally, I prefer the pre-mixed cans. Uh, next up, you're gonna go one ounce of cream of coconut and then one ounce of grenadine syrup. You're gonna shake all of these up for about a minute in your shaker. And you may notice that the coconut has become a, kind of a weird consistency that floats on top when you look at it. Now you're gonna fill your glass with ice and then you're gonna pour your mixture over it. And you'll notice that your drink is just a tad bit short. Now you, what you wanna do is you wanna top off your drink with a nice slow pour of ginger ale. In the parks they use Seagram's ginger ale, but I already felt that this drink was really sugary with all the juice and then the grenadine and then the coconut. It's just like sugar on sugar on sugar. So I use the zero sugar ginger ale for mine. And you'll notice that as you pour, some of those coconut chunks become solids as it gets cold and mixed with the ice. And they'll float to the top for kind of a weird, interesting consistency that I, I thought was pretty good. Oh, really? Well, I'll have to, I'll have to check the dates on that. Okay, last we're going to be making a home version of the Hapa Bor sampler. But before I get into that, I want to take a second to ask you to share this video, especially if you found it useful, entertaining, or whatever. Make sure that you're a member of the Sad Baby Squad. That means you're subscribed and you have all notifications turned on. That way you don't miss the next video I put out. I know it's been a little while, but I'm working on another Oga's video with more recipes for more drinks. We're going to look at T16 Skyhopper, uh, Dagobah Slug Slinger. I'm trying to think what else we've we got. Blurg Fire, Hyperdrive Punch It, and the dessert from Oga's, Oga's Obsession. Yeah, I'm gonna teach you guys how to make that too. Droid Builders Club, Droid Meetup. You can see them all back there behind me. Let's go take a look and see all the different droids we've got. <laughs> Guys, we're taking a huge group droid photo in front of the Millennium Falcon. That is ridiculous. Look at that. There's so many droids. We are having our Mubo's Droid Builders Club droid meetup you can see a bunch of blue droid backpacks everywhere a bunch of tiny droids there's sad there's brad there's more droids all these people have showed up at disneyland who's that look at that cool shirt he's wearing stan but everybody's here at disneyland we're all here for this droid meetup i can show you more but let's let's just go look close up and see what this is all about check this out they have this printout made up for Mubo's Droid Builders Club where you can take your photo of your droid and it looks like it's an action figure, like a real Kenner action figure. He even has to say Mubo's Droid Builders Club. He's got the depot in the background. That's amazing. So without further ado, the Hapabor sampler is actually something that seems to be different on each coast again similar to the batu bits they kind of do what they want at each place and it might even be limited to what items are available because some of the stuff's a little exotic so you kind of it's again we're gonna have to like venture out and get creative and kind of use our imagination with some of this stuff now basically yeah what the hapa board sampler is is like a charcuterie board but star wars style so you got your meats your cheeses your random textured things and it's just, it's a neat, like, fun way to impress your guests and your family if you want to do, like, sabak night or something like that. So for mine, I started with a cheap metal cookie sheet that I got at Walmart for about two bucks. And I cover it with a piece of parchment paper, just cut to size. Uh, then I use a mix of meats and exotic looking cheeses. So I found these items at places like Cost Plus World Market and even a couple of them at my local grocery store, uh, Walmart, Smith's, or Kroger, depending on where you're located. All right, so first up at Cost Plus, I found some great meats like this picante chorizo. And when I cut it up, it actually kind of looked like a Dianoga tentacle or something weird like that. I just like the consistency when I cut it up. 
Uh, also, this uncured agrumi salami also had, it had an odd look to it. But you could just use anything as simple as like prosciutto. I think that's what they use in the park is like a very gamey, dark, some kind of prosciutto, very thinly sliced meat. Yeah, no. Well, I know it's hapabore, but I, I couldn't identify what it was, what we call that here on Earth, you know? Now, one of the more exotic meats I found at a local artisanal food shop is called terrine. Now, I definitely saw this on my hapabore sampler the first time I ordered it. And it was kind of a really freaky looking piece of meat. It's got like a funky texture. It almost looks like spam, but like space spam, like wild space spam. I don't know. It was very strange. So the one I got was a little bit gamey and funky tasting. It was like fig and pork flavor. Uh, but it's one of those exotic things where you put that on your plate, all your guests are going to be like, ooh, what is, what is that? As for vegetables, I found some stuffed Greek longhorn peppers that were really good. And they just looked good on the tray. They brought a nice green, but they didn't look like, they looked very like otherworldly. So I thought that was cool. Now at Oga's, the Hapabor sampler has some Romanesco on it. I think it's pickled if I remember correctly, but since I couldn't find Romanesco like readily available at any of my grocery stores, probably at Whole Foods, but I honestly have spent enough getting all these things. I went a little cheap, so I found green cauliflower at my local grocery store. And I was like, you know what? This looks close enough to Romanesco. So I cut some small florets out of that. Didn't pickle it, just kind of set them there as is something fresh to go with the meat and cheese. I think it kind of brightened up the plate a bit. Now for cheese, I went with some stuff that had unique looks to it. I used purple moon cheddar that I found at Walmart and I kind of cut it into odd strange shapes, but it has that purple look to the outside of it. Now I know I saw this Irish porter cheese on the tray at Oga's. So just look at that great texture. It's like weird dark and white. And I found this stuff at Sprouts Market. It was like five or six bucks. Really good cheese. But this is exactly what they had on the tray at the on the Hapabore sampler on Batu. Now at Black Spire Outpost, the tray does come with a stone ground mustard, but I'm not a big mustard fan. So instead I went with a whole lemon fig marmalade from Cost Plus. And you can either serve it right on the tray, like a dollop right on there, or even better, get your Galaxy's Edge spork and serve it on that just to look even more like in world. Now I added some cheese crisp crackers that I got from Cost Plus to give a good texture. And honestly, they pair well with pretty much everything on the tray. So like I said before, as with the Batu bits, these are just some ideas to get you started. If you find anything else, any other cool exotic ingredients, I really want to encourage you guys to leave them down below. That way the community as a whole can try some new stuff. And I'll go be sure to love your comment and give it a thumbs up too if it's a really good suggestion. Now, just like with the Batu bits, these are just some things to get you started. And you can make your trays packed or as sparse as you want. Just depends on how many guests you've got coming. But either way, these are just some like ideas to get you started on cool ways to just, again, impress the family, impress your guests, and have just a fun Star Wars night at home. Now, do me a favor. If you guys make these, take pictures of what you did and send them to me over on Instagram. Tag us both. You can tag Rongo. You can tag me in it. We'll see it either way. And yeah, we want to share them. We want to see what you guys come up with. Hashtag Ogas at home. No, oh, you're right. Hashtag Oga's Cantina at home. My bad, Hongo, my bad. <laughs> now, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, share it with some friends, or else I'll get some of those Batu bounty hunters to come and get you. Huh? Huh? Now, thanks so much for watching. Until next time, don't be a moof milker. <laughs>